With millions living here, it's not surprising London can be noisy. But is it getting too loud? We're going to have a go at finding out. Meet Samantha. She's bothered about London's nightlife. Definitely in bars at night. How can anyone hear anything? And Ian wants to know about London streets. In many areas, traffic noise is becoming more and more prevalent. So we sent both of them on a mission to measure the noise levels with sound meters. And I'm on the underground trying to find out which tube line is the noisiest. Samantha is a comedian. So my name is Samantha Baines. She often works in loud environments. And a few months ago, she got some devastating news. I never thought at 30 years old, I would be told I needed a hearing aid. I never thought I'd been exposed to that level of noise. She wants to know if London's bars and venues can get so noisy they can damage hearing. We'll be able to look at the average sound over the total duration. So she's meeting an expert. I'm interested in whether there are potentially harmful sounds. Dr Joe Cellini works at the UCL Ear Institute and he lends Samantha a sound meter to take into the West End. All you need to do is pick a sound source that you want to find out how loud it is and point it towards it. So it's as if my ear was receiving the sound. Yeah. OK, well, good luck. In the next few hours, I'm going to go about a normal evening in London. So I'm meeting a friend for dinner. We're going to have some drinks, go to a couple of bars. Ian has also been to the UCL lab to get the meter. And now his mission is to measure some of London's busiest streets. We're on Euston Road and we're walking westwards towards Euston Station. Well, the noise is relentless. It's like a kind of grey auditory fog which just covers everything. With Ian focused on his task, it's time for me to go underground. And it doesn't take long to find something worth measuring. OK, so this is the Victoria Line heading towards Stockwell and it's absolutely deafening. And here we are on the Northern Line and once again it's really loud. I mean, I'm having to shout. Can you actually hear me? All the numbers are being recorded. Back on the surface, Samantha's enjoying her evening out, moving from bar to restaurant to bar. Really reverberating. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm really shocked. I'm having a lovely time, but it's really loud. On the streets, Ian's route takes him from Euston Road, then along Oxford Street, and ends at Parliament Square. And he's passionate about sound recording, because he used to be a sound archivist at the British Library. On the shelves, there's an old record that's worth listening to again. Well, it's one of the oldest surviving recordings of street sounds in London. Well, I'd be quite interested just to make a comparison recording, and then we can compare now with 1928. So how do they compare? It was back to the British Library to find out. 2017. And 1928. Modern life in Leicester Square sounds a bit more full-on than it does in 1928. Back underground, I've already measured several lines. It's so noisy, I've been advised by our UCL expert to wear ear defenders. And it's not just me taking precautions. Roberta frequently uses the tube and always wears earplugs. It's definitely, it's definitely not good for your hearing. You're losing your ability to hear slowly. Florian is also a tube passenger, but with a specialist interest in acoustics. And he started his own study, asking if London is louder than Paris. I thought, you know, as an acoustician, it would be a very interesting um, thing to look at. Over on the metro, I decided to join him as he carried on with his study. In Paris, we've measured about 40 to 50 stations, I would say. 
there's far less clanging and banging. You, know, you can't hear the wheels banging against the, uh, the rail. Um, so it is definitely more comfortable journey in terms of noise levels. Florian still has more stations to measure, but Paris did seem quieter. While he continues his research, ours is almost coming to its end. Samantha has an appointment with Dr. Cellini. Hi. He's done the number crunching on her night out. Yeah. So what we can see here are the different sound levels that we measured. These two bars, bar two and three, they're at a loudness which is worrying and could potentially impact on people's hearing. The sound level got up to 112 decibels and in an environment like that you wouldn't want to be there for more than a minute. For Samantha, it means a rethink on how she spends her evenings in London. I have moderate hearing loss at the moment, and if that gets worse, I could be deaf in one ear. I want to be extra careful about, you know, I'm going to get myself some earplugs. But what about the streets? How noisy are they? It was time for Ian to get his results. Hello, Joe. How are you doing? Which two streets had the loudest noise levels? Uh, Regent Street and Leicester Square. It is noisy, but thankfully it's not damaging. That's equivalent to a, a loud uh, vacuum cleaner. I wouldn't really like to be in the same room as a vacuum cleaner being used all the time, every hour of the day. Um, but yes, as a comparison, I guess it holds true. As for me, after spending one week underground, measuring 10 lines in Zone 1 and Zone 2, the data is complete. It takes Dr. Cellini a few more days to process. And then he has the verdict. So um, the central line has the loudest section or, out of all of the tube lines, and it basically gets as loud as almost 110 decibels. To put that into perspective, that's approximately as loud as going to a gig or a rock concert. Also on average, the Victoria line is the loudest, uh, followed by the Jubilee, Northern and Central line at or above 85 decibels, which if this was a work environment would be considered uh, so loud that you would have to wear ear defenders. I think what these measurements show is that the tube is sufficiently loud to warrant further investigation and certainly shows that it can be loud enough to damage people's hearing. So what does Transport for London say? We're confident that nobody out there is exposed to an unsafe noise level. Of course there are parts of the network that are noisier than others but you would need to be expo exposed to that noise for a significant period of time for it to uh, cause any hearing damage. But one of the things that we're doing of course is to look at uh, things like quieter track fastening, so we grind the rails, we replace the rails. All of that is designed to give a smoother journey but also a quieter journey. But after our research, UCL's Dr. Cellini says some tube passengers regularly hearing this could think about taking precautions. For people using the noisier lines regularly and for long journeys, then it certainly suggests that it would be worthwhile them using hearing protection.